it just had an ICE and it had four wheels and it went like something off a fan. Chris, tell me this, how can a company that's like Maserati, that's dropped the ball quite badly in the last few years with diesel saloons and SUVs and all sorts of stuff like that, how can they retain so much mystery and magic and why is Maserati still so cool? I think there's a couple of car companies that are probably unkillable. Aston Martin might be one and Maserati might be the other. There's just a mystique that comes with the brand. Aston Martin's is purely attached to a spy and, um, and Maserati is because it sounds so great. Yeah. It's, there's, a, there's a cadence to the word Maserati, Maserati. It just sounds it. so sexy. Yeah. It's, it's inconceivable the company could ever end. And no one's tried harder to kill themselves than Maserati. You'd place your money on the fact that it, it's unkillable. Even if they were selling fridges, if it was <laughs> called a Maserati, you'd still buy one. Um, yeah, and they sort of bounced around a bit, haven't they? Sports cars, saloons, GTs, there's all sorts in the back catalogue. Well, they, it seemed, you know, well, it was the case. That what they would do was they would have a look around the broader Fiat group or whatever called it itself called itself that week. Yeah. They'd nick whatever was there, stick a Maserati badge on it and see what they could re-engineer. But now they've had the chance to actually make a new car. Well, they say it's a new car, but, but, but having driven it, I'm not entirely sure it is. Yeah, well, well, brings us to our next point. Yeah, so, and then sort of out of nowhere, really, comes the MC20 supercar, and you're sort of like, blimey. You know, they've been sort of messing around with, as I say, SUVs of various sizes and saloons and stuff, and then, well, let's do a full-on carbon tub supercar. Yeah, Tell you can help me here, because I didn't do too much research on what it was beforehand. I just, I, and I ignored the PR waffle, because there wasn't much actually. One thing I found very pleasing about this car is, is there's been no noise around it, there's been no ceremony, it just sort of happened. They, I think they had an event in Italy where that was supposed to be the international launch and it was right in the teeth of uh, the pandemic and it all just sort of yeah, got trickled four out. people saw yeah, it. Yeah, a bit of Italian media and everyone else couldn't get on a plane. No, so that's uh, but it was, a web, it was a web thing. And, and they've seen, we've seen David Beckham with some suspiciously un beckham like driving in it. <laughs> he's handy, um, isn't he? Yeah, he's clearly a much better driver Golden than I thought he was. So it's ostensibly the Alpha V6 with a bit of headwork on it, I presume. They claim it's, it's their design, this V6, this Netuno V6, they call it. So. Seems to be suspiciously similar to the Alpha V6. <laughs> what, in, in cubic capacity and, <laughs> and size and, and layout? And the, this is the bit you can help me with, the tub. Mm. Is the tub a doctored version of the 4C tub or is it a brand new tub from Dallara? Brand new tub from Delara. Okay, so so uh, if it's a new tub, I'll give them benefit down and say it's a yeah. new car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and knowing what I know about the 4C, because of the transverse engine, you couldn't have double wishbones at the back. Mm -hmm. So this can't be the same tub if it's got double wishbones at the back, yeah. can it? Yeah. They wouldn't have just made, they wouldn't have, have contorted the other one to make this, that it, because it's carbon fiber, it must be an all new tub. But also, given, given the reception to the 4C, I think any associations with that car will I was one of the people that was nice about that car. I get Where so much grief for that. People always say, why did you say it's a good car? I rather enjoyed it. I was saying it was spiky. I seem to have seen a video of it. Do you it. like being in pain when you go over bumps and, and that it sort was of just stuff? A, it was just the world's a better place because it existed, I think. So, yeah, I arrive at the test track and this thing's there. I think it looks unspectacular, but it really grows on you over time. Uh, I like the fact that it's a plain-looking shape and in a sea of increasingly silly supercar shapes that are a bit ostentatious, it's more uh, low-key. I really, really think that works. You get in it and you think, well, this feels pretty special. I know it's just got two screens, but I like the simplicity of it. Yeah. And you drive it. And the Same first... screen as you get in a Fiat 500e. Yeah, but you can say that about anything. Don't forget, I remember, <laughs> I remember a very, very famous PR man who used to work for Aston Martin, his name I won't say. And I was a cub reporter on Autocar magazine. And I drove up to Millbrook to meet him and he had the new DB7 V12 Vantage. Mm -hmm. And... Um, being a bit chopsy, I got in it and I went, oh my God, it's, it's a column stock off a of Ford. Yeah. He went, well, it's not a problem for us. I went, why? He goes, because none of our customers ever sat in a Ford. <laughs> they don't know so, what Ford So is. actually, you don't, don't worry about, yeah, cheap, about stuff no. that's come from lesser cars. Cause a screen's probably, a screen, isn't it? A screen it? screen, yeah. and they probably never sat in a Fiat 500, so don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah. Um, and, and everyone's got the share bits these days, so I, can, I, can, I, don't, I don't need to be too cynical about that stuff. I didn't really understand the seat at all. This thing can generate quite a lot of lateral force. Oh yeah, force. quite flat, wasn't and it? And I just kept falling out of the seat. Sliding But around. once I got into it and was driving around, it was very, very fast. It was pretty competent oh. and it sounded good. And it, you know, in a world of slightly weird hybrid-y things that have got electricity in them, I don't understand why they've got electricity other than appeasing legislators. It just had an ICE 
and it had four wheels and it went like something off a fan. So yeah. I was initially, and actually remain, very positive about it. I don't know about you, yeah. what did you think of it? Yeah, yeah, th similar. I actually thought the, the, the engine was going to be the letdown. There was some sort of videos around of it sounding a bit poo and sounded great. And actually it was proper like fizzy and energetic. And once you woke up those turbos, yeah. flipping out. Really fun. It was really good, really good fun actually. Hmm. And because there's no hybrid bits, it sort of felt quite, quite authentic. A little bit of lag and then, then all the boosts and you're like, this is good fun. Softer than I thought, a bit more supple than yeah, I thought. Yeah, I, I didn't drive it much on the road. Mm. I was mostly on the track. So I, it, it has a suppleness that is a bit Lotus-like. Yeah. But in the very, very hard mode, it, it's very stiff on the track. Yeah. Okay, to be geeky about it, it's got two areas that I don't quite understand. One mm. um, is, the, is that the, uh, the tyre is just an off-the-peg Bridgestone. It just isn't quite up to scratch compared to what all the other big boys are giving us yeah. with Michelin's that are bespoke and specially made for the cars. This Bridgestone is a, it's not a very sophisticated tyre, mm -hmm. so it's let down by that. Um, and I, the brakes, oh yeah, the brakes, the brakes, the brakes have got this very, very firm pedal. Uh, they explained to me, they maybe have a phone call before I could drive it, you know, racing drivers signed it off, we wanted that race car feel, but mm. Yes, I, I can understand why you do that, but then you can't then tell us it's a big GT car and yeah. you want it to be a cruiser. Yeah. The brake pedal feel itself is something you'll just get used to. If you, if, you, if you own the car, you'll get used to it. Forget about yeah. that. That's just a, probably a point of opinion. Yeah. But I, they, I'm not sure how much cooling they've got. They got quite warm, let's say. They yeah. fade quite quickly for big ceramics. Yeah. But again, how many people are going to use it as a track day car? I don't think many will. Yeah. I just think it's a, a really interesting alternative to... A, it's probably an alternative to a 911 Turbo Yeah. in the way that you'd use it. It hasn't got the space, but... If you turn up in that and everyone else has got a Porsche, you're going to feel pretty good about yeah, yourself, you're I think. Cool. And, and it, yeah, it kind of occupies that cool spot. Yeah, just above, more exotic than 911 Turbo, not as kind of ballistic and hardcore as a Ferrari 296. Well, GTB. everyone's got, you know, and, and there'll be so few of them, everyone's got a Ferrari, I was about to say, God, what a world are we living in? <laughs> but, but there's a place for that car, and I can see why people would write the cheque for it. Yeah. That's all that matters. That's the business case. Yeah. How many they'll make? How many are they planning to make a year, do you know? As many as they can sell. Okay. Um, oh, there is one other thing. The price. It's quite punchy. Is it 250 it, I think it is once you've had some fun with some carbon bits. Yeah, it's, it's 190, kind of 190 basically. Yeah, it's base, which feels... Sounds awful, though. The price of these things isn't yeah. really the price. It's what it's the final still they're willing to give you at yeah, the time, isn't yeah. it? If it's 30000 down and two and a half grand a month, or whatever it is these yeah. people want to pay for these cars, yeah. and you're running it through your business, I mean, whatever it is, I, I suspect no one's going to flinch at that price. They'll yeah. be fine with it. All right, to finish then... Favourite Maserati of all time? Did you ever have a go in an MC12? Yeah, not for me, the MC12. It's just an ugly Enzo. I don't really get it. Ugly Enzo. And, I, and I, can, I can't get over the, the I suppose, screws in the headlight area at the front. <laughs> I just cannot. And it's too long. So for me, favourite Maserati? Probably the original 3200 GT with the boomerang lights, because mm. it was wild. It was wild. I had no idea what I was coming across when I first drove one of those. Every time you accelerate, you're not sure what you're going to get. And they really went, because I think with the press cars, they wound the boost up a yeah. bit. And they were, they were unruly. But it was a four-seat Italian supercar that looked great with the first LED lights at the rear that was so distinctive. Yeah. I absolutely adored it. I remember seeing the first cornering shots of one of my esteemed colleagues. In those days, you'd put the transparencies on the light box, wouldn't you? And look, at, get the, the, the micro thing yeah. out and have yeah. a look across it like that. And I remember seeing it going sideways, sideways. And then there was then there was a hole in a hedge, <laughs> and then there was just a picture of some wheels turning <laughs> in, get, in fresh three air. Three frames back. Yeah. That's the one. Yeah, that's the it was, shot. It was uh, it was wild. So I think I'd take that. But the shortened convertible version was the worst Maserati I've ever driven. The yeah. Spider. Yeah. Uh, and we talk about chassis flexing. Yeah. Oh my God! You used to chase the steering wheel around the corner, like around the cabin. Like, where, where's it gone now? The thing would bend. Thirty-two hundred, probably not. Don't cost that much these days. Isn't there's many of them? They're, they might become a cult car again. I'd, I'd have one over a forty-two hundred anyway. Well, they're cool. Now, so it's Chris Harris's favourite Maserati of all time. I think so. Of, of yeah. I'd, okay, I'd love a birdcage. I'd love a two fifty F, but I've not driven those. So, yeah. I, so I have to say a thirty-two hundred. I'd throw a uh, Quattroporte Sport GTS. Would you? Do you remember that? With the proper six-speed gear, the six-speed ZF in it. Yeah, yeah, and the 4.7 V8, and we, we had one the other day for a shoot we were doing. How did they pass noise legislation? It's it, in it's insane. It's louder than any Lamborghini, <laughs> wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but a four-door saline. Gorgeous. No, I can be with you on that. 30 grand for one of those. Is it still? 